welcome back welcome back so in this one i'm going to be doing the update for my b loader and just a quick one i do have the b loader pro as well which is actually sent to me by the b loader company and i'm going to start doing some videos on that very very soon but i want to get this one out first so again this is going to be b loader manager being updated and firmware as well i don't remember the firmware version i have but in any case i'm going to show both steps again and actually test the B-Loader to see how well it works. So step one, go to the B-Loader website and you go to the downloads section. I will put this link in the description so you guys can click on the link and jump straight there. Um, let's see, I believe I have my B-Loader folder open here. I'm gonna plug my B-Loader in at some point, but let me download what I need first. So at the very top, it says B-Loader Pro software. I'm gonna ignore that one for now because I'm assuming this will only work with the Pro version. I'm going to do super update manager for bloader so that's the one i'm going to download first so that's the bloader manager software and for the firmware i'm going to download the one that says stable firmware 2021 uh 1220 and i will not be using the LAN connection firmware just because i'm not going to be using LAN. but if you are going to be using that that's perfectly fine it should still work without it because i don't see why they would remove a feature completely right so but I'm going to go for this one. So I'm going to click on where it says Super Update Manager for B-Loader. It takes us to this second um, link, which is the forum page. And here it says, here is the latest version 1.3 version Super Update Manager. And here it says, here is the progress. I think they mean the, here is the process. So the first thing you need to do is to run Manager Driver, waiting, wait, waiting it install successfully. So I'm guessing, again, this is supposed to be run the Manager Driver, wait for it to install successfully. Then you hold down the pair button, plug in the B-Loader, and then run Super Manager. So I'm going to download this one first. I'm going to click on that. And that should, okay, I have to download this first. So click on download. That started downloading, I believe. Yes, that's there. I'm going to go back to the forum page again. I'm going to download Super Manager 1.3 as well. And that started downloading straight away. What I'm going to do is actually download all the files I need first and then show you guys how to use them. I'm gonna go back on this web page once and I'm gonna to go to where it says stable firmware. I probably have this one already, but it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna grab it again anyway. I'm gonna scroll down again and here's bloader update 2021 and it's a zipped file, a ZIP. I'm gonna click on that. And so I've downloaded all three files. I'm gonna copy those into my folder and I'll be right back. So if like me, you're using Windows 10 or Windows 11, you're gonna have a downloads folder like this. Typically in your file browser, you go to downloads and you see everything that you've downloaded recently. Here are my three files. I am going to move these files to a different folder, then unzip them and show you guys how to use them. So to do that, I'm simply gonna drag my mouse and highlight all of them at once. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click on cut. You don't have to do this. You can do everything you need to do directly from your downloads folder. But I want it to look a bit neater because I'm doing the video as well. So I'm going to move it to this folder here, which is where I have my video project. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on paste. It's going to move those three files over there so I can close this now. And what I'm going to do is unzip these files individually. You can do them all at once, but I might as well show the full step, right? Right click on the first one and go to where it says extract all. Now this might be looks slightly different on Windows 10 versus 11. This is Windows 11, this is how it looks. If I go to show more options, this is probably what it will look like on Windows 10. Still click on where it says extract all. You just need to go extract and it will extract it and another folder will be there. Now that we've done that one, I'm gonna do the second one which is manager driver 1.0. Right click on that, extract all, click extract. And again, it creates another folder called Manager Driver 1.0. And the final one's gonna be Super Manager version 1.3. Right click on that, go to Extract All again, and click on Extract. Now I have all my folders here. I am actually gonna go ahead and delete these folders so I only have the folders I need to work with. Again, you do not need to do this. This is just an extra step I'm doing just to make things look a bit simpler and a bit neater for me. The first thing I want to do is to actually update my B-Loader firmware. And how we do this, I'm gonna press and hold that single button on the B-Loader and plug it into a USB port on my laptop. So I'm gonna, I'm pressing and holding as we speak, I'm plugging it in. 
Okay, now when that comes up, I let go. The thing I'm going to want to change or remove is a thing that says update.bin. This is the file you need to update. So let me put this to one side and put this on the other side. So here is my bloader currently, and these are the files I downloaded earlier. So I'm, go I'm going to go to where it says bloader update, double click on that, double click on that, and I'm inside the folder. I might as well open the readme file just to see what's changed, if anything has changed. It says uh, this firmware improves Zim Apex. Okay, so improve Zim Apex compatibility, maybe. I'm guessing that's what that means. So here I have update.bin, and here I ha have update.bin as well. And again, the one on the right that says bloader, this is actually on the bloader currently. The update is actually smaller, which is a bit strange, but it doesn't really matter. That's a very possible thing. So this is 960 kilobytes. And the update, which I'm going to install now is 600 kilobytes. What I like to do, I'm going to copy the original one that's on the B-loader now. I'm going to rename it something else like um, update old and put it somewhere. So I'm going to rename that. I'm going to right click on this, go to copy. I'm going to paste this randomly on my desktop somewhere. And yeah, that's pasted. I'm going to rename this to old 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 update. Leave it there. And I'm going to bring this back and all I'm going to do at this stage is simply drag and drop where it says update bin from the new download onto the bloader um, now. So click and hold, drag and drop, then release. It's going to ask if you want to replace, skip. I'm going to do replace. So it replaces the current one and puts this new one there instead. All right, so that's finished. So the B-loader has now been updated. The firmware has now been updated. And next, I'm going to open the manager and see what's new in there as well. I'm now going to remove my B-loader from my PC. So I'm going to unplug it. I'm going to press that button down again. I'm going to plug it back in. This is what they said you should do. Right, that's come up. I'm going to close this window that popped up. And I'm going to simply run the B-Loader manager, well, the super manager. I'm not going to install this manager driver thing. I'm just going to try running the manager and see what happens first. Double click there. So this is a folder I downloaded and extracted earlier. I'm going to double click on where it says B-Loader here. Let's see what comes up. Okay, run anyway. That's what I'm going to choose for mine. Run anyway. You should do that because that's what needs to happen anyway. I'm going to choose yes when the thing comes up about user account control you have to click yes for it to work okay this is a nice new looking user interface let's see if it's actually going to connect they said it should connect automatically so i'm going to give it a few seconds and if it doesn't then i'm going to unplug and try again Okay, I think I've waited long enough. The program did close and reopen, so I'm guessing the driver installed perfectly fine. I didn't actually have to click on the driver installation thing. I'm gonna unplug my B-loader. I'm gonna leave that software open. I'm gonna, as it says, hold B-loader pairing button and insert into PC USB port. So I'm gonna press it and hold it, then plug it into the USB port. Nothing's changed for me. All right, so let's try that one more time. I'm going to close the B-Loader software this time. I am going to unplug it from my USB port. And I'm going to press and hold it again. Plug it back into the USB port. Okay, nothing's changed. And now let me open the B-Loader software. Click yes to accept. There we go, B-Loader found. So it's a bit finicky, but if you do that, so let me repeat those steps again. I plugged my B-Loader in whilst holding down the button on there. It automatically installed the driver as soon as I opened the B-Loader software. After the driver was installed, it restarted the B-Loader software, but the B-Loader was not found. So all I did, I closed the software, I unplugged the B-Loader, and just plug it back in and open the software again. And as you can see here, it comes up with B-Loader found and I can do configuration or upgrade. So I'm guessing you can actually upgrade the B-Loader firmware directly from here. It's a quick thing to note. 
when the B loader has been found by B loader version 1.3 and it's in the correct configuration or upgrade um, mode, I guess, it does not show up in this PC. So you will not be able to copy over the firmware file like we did before. So just a quick note, this is what it should look like. So just to see if this works, I'm going to actually click on upgrade and see if I can actually choose my firmware file and upgrade it directly from here, which will make it a lot easier for most people. So you can choose English or Chinese. I'm going to click on upgrade. Yes, I guess you can. I'm going to select upgrade firmware. So I'm going to go browse, click on this. I'm guessing it's going to let me browse. Yes, it did. I'm going to click on desktop and I think I have, it's called B loader update. Uh, B loader update. There we go. Go into that folder. And this is my update file. So simply browse to where your update file is. Click on it. I'm going to click open. And then I'm going to click upgrade and fingers crossed. Let's hope for the best. Yeah, seems to be working perfectly fine. I think what I'll do next, I'll do another video with just a really quick tutorial on how to upgrade the firmware and how to set up the B loader as well. This is going to be the longer video that explains everything from start to finish. But if you know the process relatively and you just want to quickly go through and get stuff done, maybe watch that video as well, um, instead. So I'll put that one in the description. Upgrade success confirmed. Perfect. So that's been done. Thing is going to be the configuration. Now, this is where most people, myself included, got a bit confused and it kept going back and forth. But let's click on configuration and see what happens. It comes up with this screen here and my details are already there, right? But I'm going to go through one step at a time exactly what needs to be done for you to get yours working. So please just bear with me. I've cleared all my details. So hopefully nothing is there and I'm going to show you guys from start to finish what to do next. I might as well close these two things in the background. I won't need that, those for now. So step one says click here to set up your PSN account. So you're simply going to click on that button. It's going to open a new browser window and what you should be doing here. Let me drag mine across. Again, I'm going to blur mine out. So it has my email address here. You should put your email address in. I'm going to click next on here. Put your password in. Mine has already been saved. Click sign in. So I'm going to go onto my phone. I think it's going to ask me for two factor authentication because I have that activated on my account. If you don't, you don't need to worry about this. But if you do, simply put the code in. So I'm going to put mine in and I'm going to click verify. Once I click verify, it should give me the information I need. It's going to redirect you somewhere. And once you've been redirected, all you need to do at that stage is simply copy the URL at the very top. Again, I cannot show all of mine. Sections will be blurred out, but I'm simply going to highlight all of the um, URL at the top. Right click, go to copy, and I'm going to go back to my B loader window. And where it says, um, now after I've copied my URL, I'm going to come back here and where it says click here after copy successful and wait for PSN ID to be displayed. All you have to do is copy that URL I showed you before, click on this thing here, and it's going to automatically populate that box to the very right where it says ID. Again, I'm not going to show you mine just so I don't um, have any security issues later on. That's done. You're good to go. Now it says, please input the Wi-Fi account and password. I know my Wi-Fi details. I've copied them into a text file, but again, I'm going to have mine blurred out. So where it says Wi-Fi account, that's actually the Wi-Fi name or the SSID name. So the name of your Wi-Fi. So let's say you go on your phone, your tablet or your laptop and you search for Wi-Fi and yours comes up. I'm with Virgin Media here in the UK. That's one of the companies that do it. So my Wi-Fi name that shows up when I search starts with VM for Virgin Media. 08 whatever whatever right put the name of your wi-fi in um, i am not sure if it is case sensitive so the safest thing to do is to type it exactly how you see it again mine is blurred out and it's going to stay blurred out i'm going to copy my wi-fi name because i wrote it down earlier i'm going to paste it in here oh it doesn't allow me to paste that's not great all right fine i'm going to have to type everything then so i'm going to type mine just bear with me a second Okay, my Wi-Fi name has been typed in now, or the SSID name. Now, all I have to do is type in my Wi-Fi password. 
I'm going to do that now. You should go ahead and do the same thing. Wi-Fi passwords are 100% case sensitive, meaning if it's an uppercase letter, you have to type an uppercase letter as well. If it's lowercase, you type lowercase. That's what that means. So bear with me again. Okay, Wi-Fi password typed in. Now it says PS5 console eight digit code matching code. So you're gonna need to go to your PS5. I'm gonna try and show this section as best as I can, but I don't think it's gonna work properly because I don't have my tripod with me. So on your PS5, you're gonna go to settings. I mean, I just go up to the top and go over to settings there. I'm gonna go to settings and then it says I need to go to system. So system is down here. I'm going to then go to where it says remote play, remote play here. Um, remote play for me is already enabled, but what I need to do is a link device. So I'm going to go down here where it says link device. Make sure, please ensure that your, your check is on the right hand side. So this is turned on. I'm going to click link device and I'm going to enter that code that showed up on my TV into the box, that very last box. I'm going to do my code, you do yours. You only have about five minutes for this to time out, so please make sure you hurry up. I've entered my code, I'm going to click save, and then I, and then that should be it. So click save, and as you can see here, it says uh, confirmation save successfully, and that's it, that's everything done. Now, this was a very long video, I know, but I wanted to show step by step by step everything that needed to be done for you to fully get your B-Loader connected and working. Now, the last thing I did, whilst my code is still being displayed, I plugged my B-Loader into my PS5 directly just to test it. And as you can see, it came off the code straight away and it showed that everything is connected and everything is working. So that's how you go from start to finish, connecting your B-Loader, setting it up, upgrading the firmware and plugging it into your PS5. My bead order now has a, um, a, a solid green light. There's nothing flashing, there's no blue lights. It's a solid green light now. So everything should be working. I'm gonna be using my bead order with a Zim Apex. But before I show those steps, I wanted to show this. And in another video, I'm gonna show how I connect my bead order and my Zim Apex to work on my PS5.